And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. These things I have spoken to you while I am still with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your hearts be troubled, neither let them be afraid. Well, there's probably about a thousand and one sermons in that passage. So, I want to talk about, really, about the, the nature of the Holy Spirit. What is he like? Because that's what our little series is about. And so I've asked a few questions of myself and of this passage and just see, see what it says to us. And the first question... The obvious question, which I hope most of you have an idea of the answers to start with, is who is the Holy Spirit? I guess we've got to start there. It's pointless me talking about the Holy Spirit if we're not really sure who he is. And, of course, that means that in about two minutes I've got to explain fully the Trinity (laughs) so that you all fully understand it. And... Well, if you don't know what I'm talking about, the Trinity, we see God. The Bible tells us that God is one God, but he is a God in three distinct persons. God the Father, God the Son, which is Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. Now, how that can be is, frankly, one of those questions that is beyond our minds. We just can't understand it. I'm not going to even try and explain. But this is how God tells us that he is. People have tried to explain it. There's a a sort of classic illustration which goes along the lines of, well, you've got sort of water, which is in three different distinct forms. You can have steam, which is like a gas. You can have uh, water, which is a liquid. Or you can have ice, which is a solid. And they're all the same, but they're different. It's kind of a good illustration, but it doesn't really... It sort of breaks down if you try and follow it any further. There is no way that we can get our minds, our human minds, around the fact that God is one God in three distinct persons. We accept it by faith, because the Bible tells us God himself tells us that this is what he's like. And we cannot separate God, therefore, into little boxes. So it's very hard to talk about the Holy Spirit just completely on his own because everything about the Spirit is mixed in with Jesus and with God the Father. And God is completely harmonious. It's not as though the Holy Spirit goes off and does something, comes back and God the Father says, what have you been doing today? You know, they're not distinct like that. Everything that God does is complete within himself. Uh, It's 
it's not like us. You know, Beryl and I are married. We've been married a long time. And the Bible tells us that when we got married, we come, become one flesh. But when Beryl goes out for the day, she went out for the day yesterday, I haven't got a clue what she's doing. And she did a first aid course. I know what she, I know what she was doing, but I didn't hear the things she heard. I didn't say the things she said. And although, scarily, she can read my mind, it seems, at times, <laughs> I can't read hers at all, because no man can understand any woman, as we all know. So we are one flesh. The Bible tells us so, but we're still very distinct people. God isn't like that. We have one God in three persons. They are completely harmonious. They are completely together in everything that they do. So when we talk about the Holy Spirit, we're still going to be talking about the other parts of God. We can't get away from that. We can see God as three persons working together in this passage. Verse 25 Uh, Well, verse 26 actually says, Jesus, no, start from 25, get it right. Jesus says, these things I've spoken to you with while I'm still with you. So it's Jesus telling him about the things he said. And then he says, the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. So the Holy Spirit is coming. But he's coming under the name of God the Father. And he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So he is coming, but his job is to bring to mind and to teach the disciples the things that Jesus has said. So there's the three working completely together in the same situation there. And in fact, the Spirit's job... We can see in uh, chapter 16, just over the page, a very similar couple of verses here. Jesus says in verse 12, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, for he will take what is mine and declare it to you. So the Spirit is coming, but his actual job is not to glorify himself. His job is to glorify Jesus. And in fact, it's one of the things the Bible tells us we should test the spirits. When people say, and you will hear, People from any place and any religion say, God said to me, this is what God spoke to me. And how do we know what is right and what is wrong? Does it glorify Jesus? Because if it's the Spirit of God, it will glorify Jesus. So the Spirit's work... Under the authority of the Father is to glorify Jesus. But I wrote this sentence down as I was preparing yesterday, and I wrote, but we can talk about the Spirit's work as separate. And then I stopped for a moment and I thought, no, it's not. It's not separate. But we can talk about it as being distinct. It's not separate from God, but it's distinct from the work of Jesus and from the work of the Father. So that's what we're going to try and do. So the second question I asked is, how does he work? How does he do what he's doing? Well, the Holy Spirit was sent in a way to replace Jesus in our lives. The disciples had spent three years walking and talking with Jesus. And it's probable that they thought that this would be a brilliant way to spend the rest of their lives. 
because they could be with him, they could ask him questions, he would be there to, to help and whatever they wanted. But, of course, that doesn't work with a church of millions and billions across the world, does it? And so Jesus says, this is actually better for you, that I go to the Father and the Holy Spirit comes to you. Because the Holy Spirit comes into each of our lives. He is the one that comes and lives in us. Again, we see that. I just want to take you through these verses because these are a wonderful description of what God does. And for me reading this, it just brought it alive to me in a way I'd not thought about for a long time. From verse 16, Jesus says, I will ask the Father, he will give you another helper to be with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. So the Holy Spirit comes not just to live with us. If we had a God who lived with us, but was, if you like, like Ollie, was physically here. I mean, Ollie's not here today. What if God today was at, um, you know, a church in Manchester and we wanted to ask him something? It wouldn't work. But the Holy Spirit is with us as individuals, and lives in us. We have him in our hearts, in our minds. I will not leave you as orphans. This is verse 18. I will come to you yet a little while, and the world will see me no more, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Although Jesus is going to be with the Father, he says, you will still see me. Why? Because we have the Holy Spirit. We have the Spirit of God in the form of the Holy Spirit, but teaching us and reminding us of everything that Jesus said. So in effect, we have Jesus with us all the time, every situation, every part of our lives. And I love this part because I talked before about how you, we can't really distinguish between parts of God, if you like. God the Father and the Holy Spirit, they're all one at the same time as being distinct. And yet we are literally drawn into that relationship. In that day you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Because of the Holy Spirit living in us, we are drawn into that relationship. We become children of God, and it's not just that we have sort of joined a club. We've agreed to a set of rules. We think, yeah, this is a great club, you know, we'll join, therefore we can come into a building. We are drawn into a relationship. That's what being a Christian is all about. It's about being involved in a loving relationship with Jesus. That God literally lives in us and through us. It's so much more than just joining a group. And it's all because of the Holy Spirit's work. I wrote down whilst I was looking at this, meditate on this. If there's ever a verse that would be good to meditate on, it's that one about how we are in the Father. Well, let's read it again rather than me trying to. In that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. Just a few words, but so full of incredible truth for us. We are in God. We are part of God because of the Holy Spirit living in us. Third question I asked, what does he do? 
Well, it starts off in verse 16, doesn't it? Jesus says, I will ask the Father, he will give you a helper to be with you forever. Then the verse 26, the, fo- the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So we have a helper, and that word, I'm not a Greek expert, I'm sure if Matthew was here he could tell you all about the real meanings of the word, but, but basically the word is to do with, uh, it's like a legal term. So the helper is like an advocate who speaks on your behalf. So it's literally reminding us straight away of the verses from Luke, Luke 12, where Jesus says to his disciples, when they bring you before the synagogues and the rulers and the authorities, do not be anxious about how you should defend yourself or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. So when we're talking about a helper, we're not just talking about someone that will help us in everyday things, but somebody who will put words into our mouth from God to speak on God's behalf to the world. He's our teacher as well, verse 26. He will teach you all things. Bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. Again, the the Holy Spirit works under the authority of God the Father in this. If we go back to that those verses in uh, in chapter sixteen. It says, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. Jesus says the same thing, doesn't he? Jesus says that I don't speak my own words, but I speak what the Father tells me to speak. The Father and the Holy Spirit are working in conjunction with, Jesus and the Holy Spirit are working in conjunction with the, Holy, with the Father in bringing God's words to us. He also declares what is to come. That's quite an amazing thing, isn't it? He will declare to you the things that are to come. And he, thank you, Beryl. <laughs> and also, he will guide us into all truth. Because he is the spirit of truth. Again, verse 16 says he will give you, the father will give us another helper even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him as an aside and I did try and avoid getting sidetracked preparing this or I could literally have gone on for days but thinking about that I thought how desperately our world needs truth. How absolutely desperately. And we don't just need the truth as in some facts. We need God, who is the spirit of truth. This, if it does anything, should lead us to want to evangelize, to tell people about the truth. Because our world is just going crazy because it says there is no real truth. I mean, I could bring up loads of examples. I'm sure you've all heard them, but, you know, we're so technologically advanced, we can send a man to the moon. 
You can't send a woman to the moon because we haven't got a clue what a woman actually is. I mean, it is literally that crazy. And the world desperately needs to know and hear from the spirit of truth. Last question is what do I do? Because this is all very interesting talking about the Holy Spirit. But of course we need to... We are involved. You know, this isn't just a technical exercise. This is a relationship involving all of us. In fact, that's what it starts with. The whole passage starts, if you like, with our responsibility. Jesus says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. That's how it all starts. And love and obedience run right through this passage. It might be about the Holy Spirit, but four times Jesus says this. He says it in verse 15 to start with. Then in verse 21, Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. Then Jesus asks him a question. How is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? And Jesus says, again, why is he showing himself to us? If anyone loves me, he will keep my word. That is our responsibility. But that is why God loves us, why God sends his spirit for us. Because we are in a relationship of love with him. I don't ever think of things to put on PowerPoints like some preachers do. I know Ollie's very good at that kind of thing. But something I saw the other week just seemed very appropriate and I, I didn't get around to doing a PowerPoint for it. I'm very sorry. but It was a picture of the, I'm sure you all know it straight away, the Michelangelo painting on the Sistine Chapel of the creation of Adam and it's with God stretching out his hand and Adam stretching out his hand and they're almost just touching and I'd never noticed this before but there was along with the general picture that showed the whole thing there was a close up of the two hands and God's finger is out like this and Adam's finger is out like this and somebody said Michelangelo knew that God always stretches out his hand to touch us and we just need to actually lift our finger sometimes and we need to be obedient God wants to bless us with his Holy Spirit he wants to help us he wants to teach us but we have a responsibility too to love him and to be obedient Being obedient is just part of love. It's not a case of, oh, we have to be obedient because it's a set of rules and we've got to follow them. If we love him, we will be obedient. So this isn't all just about God. It's us as well. We are involved in this relationship and we have a responsibility to do our part. I think I will just leave it there. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you that you didn't leave us as orphans, that you sent the Holy Spirit to draw us into a relationship with you. Thank you that the Spirit works in our lives, that you teach us, that you help us that you want to be involved in every part of our lives. And Lord, I pray that you would help us to love you and to be obedient in response.
And thank you, Lord, for all the blessings that you pour into our lives through that relationship. Lord, we have so much to be thankful for. We love you, Lord. Amen.